Hi, this is Chris Converse from Codify Design Studio. I wanted to take a minute to walk you through all of the files that are included when you download this particular template. So once you extract the files, you're going to get two folders, a design folder and a published folder. And I want to first start by showing the actual final template. So if I open up the index.html file up in a browser, first thing you'll notice is that there's a marquee right in the center that will actually run on an autoplay and automatically advance itself after a certain number of seconds. We animate up the caption and even bring in these interactive buttons here that you can actually use to click and change between different panels. The design also features some responsive techniques or multi-screen design using CSS3 media queries. So if I grab the site and shrink it down, when we get down to the medium screen view, you'll see that we actually move the navigation under the marquee. We move the headings under the promo items here. And then if we come down even further to our handheld device, I can scroll down here and see that the navigation has now been positioned after the content. The promotional items have the image on the left hand side and we even replace the marquee with a single panel promotional image. Now the other interesting thing about this template is in addition to the CSS3 media queries we're using a set interval that's running in JavaScript and using jQuery's Ajax load to either load the marquee panels for a medium and large screen display or a single panel for a small screen or handheld device. In order to get this to work let's take a look at this file inside of Dreamweaver. So when we open this file up inside of Dreamweaver, we can see all of the related files across the top. Here's the small and medium CSS files that are inside of media queries. We have the image preload, which we actually run against all of the images in the marquee panels. We got permission to use this by Dimas Beganoff, who gave us permission to download these with our assets. And lastly is a template.js file. So I'm going to select that over here, and Dreamweaver will show me this in the split screen view in the uh, left-hand code area. So at the very top, we have a whole series of variables that we're setting. I'm going to come down here and change the debug mode from off to on. A custom function that we wrote called load marquee data. You'll see down here that we actually set the interval to play the auto advance function every 1000 milliseconds or every second. And then when this runs, we actually run this if statement up here using jQuery to test the width of the display. And if it is greater than 550 pixels, we're going to go into the marquee folder and grab the marquee panels.html file. And if it is less than 550, we're going to go into the same marquee folder and grab the small screen HTML file. This is how we're going to decide whether or not we have multiple panels in the top or a single small screen panel. Now to test this, I'm going to hit option F12 to test in browser. Once I do that, you'll see that the debug mode now is showing up underneath the marquee. I can watch the variables count up. So when time passed equals time to change, then the marquee is actually going to auto advance itself. So now what I'm going to do is close this down to the handheld size, move this over to the corner, and I'm going to bring up an inspection tool that's going to allow me to evaluate the amount of data. So let me switch this to the network mode. Let me hit reload. And then over here on the right hand side, I can see all of the information that's being loaded when the website is initiated on a small screen device. There are 14 file requests totaling 146 kilobytes. Now while this is up, I'm going to grab this window, make it a little bit wider, that's going to invoke the jQuery load for the marquee panels, which is going to include additional data. Let me hit refresh, come back to the profiling tool. Now I can see that there's been 18 requests made at a total file size of 520 kilobytes. And I can see these marquee photos showing up here with roughly file sizes of about 100k each. So not only am I seeing CSS3 changes with media queries, but I'm also seeing the result of loading different data through jQuery's Ajax mode based on the width of the screen. So let me close out of these. Let's come back to the files. Now inside of the home page marquee folder, you'll see that there's a marquee panels HTML and a marquee panel small screen. Let me open both of these inside of Dreamweaver. These are simply just HTML files that just specify an image and the caption information for each one of the panels. So the small screen here just simply has one screen of information. Marquee panels has multiple panels. So each one of these panels has a beginning and an end. So you can add or remove panels in the markup, and the script that we wrote will automatically add or remove panels from the marquee. Now the last thing we'll take a look at is, back in the source files, there was a design folder. Inside the design folder is a template artwork.psd native Photoshop file. So this Photoshop file has some slices that have been saved into the file already to help you customize your design. We have a gradient over on the right hand side. We chose to do this as a particular graphic since there is some inconsistencies on using the gradient tool on the actual body tag and different viewports on different browsers. We have the three different sizes of the graphics here. We have our logo, 
our marquee buttons, our mobile screen buttons. We even have a transparent ping here that we can actually use in IE7 and 8 in the IE version of the CSS file since they don't support CSS3 transparencies. And we have the three different button states for the marquee. In order to see the artwork easier, there's an FPO layer at the very bottom that you can turn on. Once you have the artwork saved properly, you can choose File, Save for Web and Devices, and then have Photoshop actually save out each slice as an individual graphic. So with that, I encourage you to modify the design in Photoshop and then to actually use AJAX in jQuery with a listener event in addition to media queries to optimize the user experience across different devices.